All right. Um, thank you for joining um, me today and uh, Captain Owens, uh, who runs our investigations unit or division at the police department. Uh, yesterday at 5.07 p.m., we were called to the parking deck of Main and Stone, and uh, that is a uh, fairly new apartment community uh, with a built-in uh, parking deck to support uh, the high-rise multifamily uh, housing uh, units that are there. And it was reported that a, um, uh, there was possibly a gunshot victim uh, in a vehicle on the third floor of that parking deck. Uh, officers responded and they found 28-year-old Meredith Rame, R-A-H-M-E, uh, in the driver's side uh, seat of a white Honda CRV. Uh, she was deceased from a gunshot wound to the head. From the witness statements, uh, and there was, uh, although not a witness to the shooting precisely, uh, there was a witness who observed the vehicle leaving. Uh, and so from, from that witness statement and uh, the uh, statements from uh, the estranged husband of the suspect, we were able to identify uh, the suspect uh, in the shooting. And um, we determined that she was 36-year-old Jessica Edens, E-D-E-N-S, uh, of Easley. Uh, she is the estranged wife uh, of a resident at Main and Stone. And the victim is an acquaintance of that same resident. Based on witness accounts, we believe that there were two children in the back seat of the vehicle who were alive at the time that they left uh, the parking deck following the shooting. We were notified by Pickens County uh, sheriff's Office that the suspect vehicle had been found with three deceased individuals in that vehicle, uh, two being children, one being an adult female. Uh, the adult female is Jessica Edens uh, and her two children, a uh, boy and a girl, uh, aged nine and five. We are confident that Jessica Edens shot and killed Meredith Rame while she was seated in her vehicle in the parking deck at Main and Stone parking garage. From what we have gathered, Jessica Edens and the male acquaintance were separated at the time of the incident and there were custody issues going on between the two of them uh, regarding one of the two children uh, who is a child they have in common. Pickens County, uh, because of the jurisdictional uh, boundaries, Pickens County has picked up the investigation uh, of uh, the three deaths in the vehicle. Uh, they will comment and are certainly in a better position and it's more appropriate that they comment on the contents of their investigation or the revelations from their investigation and uh, what they determine. Uh, we know uh, that uh, this particular case stems from uh, domestic related separation and subsequent uh, conflict in that separation. Uh, it is um, really among the most difficult of crimes uh, to investigate and uh, it's important to remember here that there are families uh, and fathers who have lost young children uh, to the senseless violence uh, and our hearts go out to them uh, and really to all families who experience this kind of tragedy. So uh, I'll be happy to take some questions if you have any questions, uh, but ultimately uh, our investigation uh, will continue on in, in, in conjunction with Pickens County, uh, but, but it will be essentially cleared exceptionally because uh, the, both the victim and the suspect are deceased. Yeah, so there were, uh, over the course of the last uh, maybe three weeks, there were um, three calls to police, uh, two here uh, in, in Greenville, in the city, uh, one to Easley. Uh, the one to Easley, I believe, occurred just Tuesday to ask Easley PD to check on the welfare of the children. Um, and that came from the, the uh, 
the estranged husband uh, involved here who lives at Main and Stone. Um, the two that came into Greenville were really around uh, the harassment related either text messages or phone calls or the posting uh, of derogatory material. And those were contact calls where uh, the victim in this case, um, uh, Ms. Rame, was, uh, was uh, interested in speaking with an officer about what her options were, so an officer called her back. Uh, there were no indications of threats or communications, just how to deal with that. It was explained how they could go about filing a complaint with Facebook, but that the person who's, you know, and, and some of these web postings, social media postings, how to work through that uh, and work through the issue uh, through the person whose um, website, if you will, it was posted on. Uh, the other one was around text messaging, and there were, uh, uh, as I understand it, uh, no communications of any threat or anything like that that would have required a a police response, and um, both parties, uh, to my knowledge, appeared satisfied with the uh, contact and the advice they'd gotten from police. Can you confirm whether there was a romantic relationship between Meredith and the acquaintance? Uh, I can, yeah, I cannot confirm that. Can you confirm if uh, Meredith worked with the acquaintance? Uh, my understanding is that they worked at the same uh, employer. Um, I'm not going to do that right yet. Thanks. Uh, our, excuse me, is uh, Meredith uh, married? I don't know. Chief, was the answer the, to that question? I don't know the answer to that question. As far as you know, was, was Mrs. Edens formally divorced from? from uh, separated. Just separated. Separated. Okay. And you said there was a child custody issue. This had, uh, had, had been at least ruled on in court. Well, I don't believe I said that, but I do. No, no, I I'm do asking, believe in. Fa I, I do believe that there. There's information I have that there was a recent proceeding in court regarding child custody, child custody uh, and uh, and that um, that prompted the call to easily on Tuesday. Chief clarification on the, the children. Is the boy is nine. Boy is nine. Uh, the, the yes, the girl is five. And which was the, the child in common? The young lady. Five. And Chief, could you clarify the date that um, Ms. Rame contacted the Greenville police? Uh, June 23rd. And the following one was June 24th uh, from her estranged uh, husband. And uh, the next call was Tuesday to Easley PD. This past Tuesday. July, I think, 11th. So three, three calls total, two in, two in Greenville and the other in Eden. That's right. And the calls were made by Edens or by Eden and her acquaintances? Yeah, so they were, um, I believe his name is Edens, Mr. Edens. Yes, Mr. Edens and by uh, Mer Meredith Rame. Uh, that would be that would be Mr. Eden's her her estranged husband okay. separated. And She's separated from. And he has nothing to do with Meredith Rame. Are they two different So there's there is a there is a an acquaintance relationship. Uh, I'm not going into what that. I, I don't have all the knowledge of that. There's an acquaintance relationship between. The deceased victim, Ms. Rame, and Ms. Reedens. Could you confirm if they lived in the same unit? I can't confirm. Is that because you don't know? Or I don't have the answer to that question, but I don't think it's appropriate at this point to even bring it out if I did have it, but I don't have it. What is Ms. Eden's first name? Yeah. Ben. Well, I, you know, I think um, it's a, I don't even know how to answer that question. I mean, I know how to answer that question. I don't know that that's an appropriate question for this setting um, in, the, in the sense that uh, it's difficult for, for us, uh, but there are still family members who have lost their children out there and out of respect for them uh, and, the, and the 
just the pain uh, that they feel um, and, and the things that they're going through right now as a parent who have lost children. Um, I, I think the focus needs to be there. Thank you. Did you pull that video on surveillance from around the state? As I understand, there was a lot of surveillance in things. So we looked, uh, we looked ex uh, for, for a, a video last night, and um, actually a number of us didn't see any video cameras, but I'm told today that there were a couple near the entrance uh, that, of that garage, and so we're pulling that video, uh, and that should uh, confirm the vehicle either coming or going, so we should have a little bit more information over time about whether um, the suspect followed the victim into the, into the parking garage or basically was lying in wait. Do you think it's possible that this shooting would have been caught by surveillance video? Uh, no, I don't believe the, the, the location of the shooting will actually be caught on, but, but we're exploring all that. Uh, we're trying to pull what video we can. Chief, you, you, your investigation is continuing. What, what questions do you still need answers for at this point? Where, where do you go from here based on what you told us today? Well, I mean, it, you know, we'll, we'll be coordinating with Pickens County. We'll be coordinating with the medical examiner and the coroner's office uh, on, on the investigation. Uh, as we go forward, as they go forward, uh, we'll be working closely also with um, the family members. Uh, to try and understand the why behind what happened. Uh, and, it, you know, it's very difficult to, to deal with these situations if you don't understand the why. Don't know that we'll ever fully know. Um, there, we, we usually posit certain theories and then try and see how the evidence aligns to those various theories. Uh, but uh, espousing any theory here would be more or less speculation, I think, at this point. So can't do that. A 40 caliber uh, handgun. Chief, just to go back to it for clarification, on the 23rd and the 24th, it was, it was Meredith who called Greenville Police asking what Meredith happened. called on the 23rd, and uh, Mr. E Edens called on the 24th. And, and those calls were around what her options were with regard to the online bullying? Okay. Yeah, that's, that's my understanding. Mm -hmm. How to handle that. Uh, and, and my understanding is also that it was explained that we could take police reports, but those were declined. But was there any indication, based on those two calls, so, so in advance of, of what happened yesterday and, and last night, was there any indication that violence was, was part of this equation or, or possible violence like, like we saw last night? So um, it, it's not to us, um, but um, I, I, I can't speak for, you know, easily in that situation uh, and Mr. Edens because I know that he called in a welfare check. So, uh, and that was just post the custody um, decision and I guess some subsequent texts that had come from that. Easily residents, yes. I don't know, ma'am. Uh, there is there is some indication that this week, on or about the time of the on or about the time of the custody decision, uh, that she had um, some sense for uh, inflicting violence either on the on the children or. Uh, on herself or both, and, um, and that wasn't discovered until uh, after she was discovered last night. And just to, to clarify, only one of the children were her and Mr. Eames, correct? That's correct. Only one child in common. You said that uh, the second Mrs. Eames, she had made contact with the police once when um, prior to the shooting where Mrs. Brown had come I'm sorry. What type of correspondence was the shooting? No, I'm not aware that any any authorities knew anything about any harm until after yesterday uh, completely unfolded, including uh, finding Miss Eden's deceased and her children deceased. Does the gun belong to Miss Eden? I can't answer that question. It's uh, Pickens may be able to do that. 
That's my understanding. Oh, I, you say Glock? I don't know about Glock. I don't know about Glock. 40 caliber handgun. Okay, thank you very much.